Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you. Hear the prayers of your servants and guide us in the way of justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts uh, for Mass this morning. On this Friday, in the seventh week of Easter, we also pray in a special way for an outbreak of peace in our cities. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have revealed that peacemakers are to be called your children, Grant, we pray, that we may work without ceasing to establish that justice which alone ensures true and lasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in the custody of Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priest and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them, that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he faces his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charges. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion, about a certain Jesus who had died, but Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he was willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, blessed, I'm sorry, the Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord Lord has established established his throne throne in heaven. heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing in his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord has has established established his throne throne in heaven. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The The Lord Lord has has established established his throne throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord Lord has has established his throne throne in heaven. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. 
The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter, a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, Sacred Heart Catholic Schools, teachers and staff. It's good to have people in church uh, for a Mass, where I don't have to just respond to myself. And for those of you who are watching um, via the YouTube uh, live stream or by Facebook Live, uh, I just want to just take a moment to show you the people who are here uh, with us. So I'm going to turn the laptop around and you can see all of your teachers. There they are. Say hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. I think they're all in the view. All right. So I've got to actually um, reconnect the power cord since it came out and done. All right. And uh, for those of you on Facebook, we'll just do a little slide here too. There you are. Hello. All right. So been a long few months and in the Twin Cities it's been a rough few days um, as you have watching the news or watching social media you've seen reports of um, violence and civil unrest and we know uh, the spark for uh, that civil unrest was the um, death of George Floyd uh, a man uh, who was uh, treated according to the videos that we all saw in an unjust way. And uh, sometimes the response to injustice, uh, it causes great amount of anger. And anger is one of those emotions that we all experience from time to time. And, and the, very, the feeling of anger itself is not necessarily a sinful thing. We can be justly angry and we can feel anger. I mean, we call Jesus, for example, uh, there was a moment when he uh, felt very angry uh, and about the uh, way that the temple in Jerusalem was being treated. He had called it uh, like a marketplace. In fact, he even turned over the tables and drove out the money changers uh, who had turned the, the holy temple, a place of prayer, into a marketplace. Uh, so he expressed anger and acted from that anger. And yet there is an, an aspect of anger which can become um, rageful 
And when anger becomes rage, it becomes unmoored, unconnected from our human reason. And when it becomes unconnected from our human reason, it often goes places where others become collateral damage to our anger. Uh, and I think that's what we're seeing uh, in the uh, various parts of the Twin Cities. A legitimate anger, a just anger that has been turned into the flame of rage. And when rage takes over, um, then reason is left behind and we have the kind of civil unrest that we see on the streets. We, uh, of course, here at Sacred Heart, we are followers of the Lord Jesus. We acknowledge him to be the Son of God. And one thing that God reveals is how his just anger is turned into mercy. And that is what Jesus shows us. Jesus, the Son of God, is the merciful one. And he is the Prince of Peace, the true Prince of Peace. You know, when he was uh, unjustly accused of blaspheming, and then brought before Pontius Pilate, um, he did not respond. He was like uh, a lamb, uh, in, even in receiving his accusations. And then he was unjustly put to death on the cross. It's interesting that over the course of the um, narrative of the Passion, um, Jesus does make the mention that if he had wanted, he could have called a legion of angels to defend him. And yet... He did not do that. Uh, he received an unjust sentence and was put to death on the cross. But in doing so, he took upon himself all the sins of the world, and then in his rising again, has restored the reality of life. In other words, he changes sin and violence into life. And one thing that we see with uh, Christians throughout the centuries, those who strive to live according to the ways of peace uh, throughout um, and to be genuine in their Christianity. Not an easy thing to do. We're all str struggling to do that. We see that the ones who are the true peacemakers are the ones whose remembrance lasts uh, forever. You can think about uh, in, our own tw in the 20th century, I know this is the 21st century, but in the 20th century there was uh, a very uh, religious man. He was a preacher, in fact, a Christian pastor um, named Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, he followed the path of nonviolent resistance to injustice and oppression. Certainly there were others who took a different path, but the one that we honor, the one that we remember, the one that we memorialize and celebrate is Martin Luther King Jr. Because by his path of nonviolent resistance bore actual change that has led to a better world. Uh, and so that is probably the thing that I think would be most helpful for us to, to remember. Remember those who are uh, the peacemakers, the true peacemakers, who suffered injustice, and then by the, their patience and their gentleness. And yes, they were strong. Um, so strong, in fact, that they overcame um, the feelings of rage that sometimes well up inside. They're the ones that we remember as the true peacemakers. And they're the ones that we want to be like, like Martin Luther King Jr., or St. Peter, or St. Paul. In fact, St. Paul, in the first reading today, we hear that he was imprisoned. What was his crime? He was preaching about the person of Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and not everyone wanted to hear that message. And in fact, uh, they arrested him. And ultimately, he would be tried. He would go to Rome, and he would be tried by the emperor, and he would be convicted, um, convicted of worshiping Jesus Christ, and that cost him his life. Um, but he's the one who uh, had that beautiful passage in the letter of the Corinthians about what it does mean to love. Remember those words. You probably heard it at a wedding before. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not pompous. It is not rooted. It is not conceited. So from St. Paul, we learn what it means to love. Now, we are followers of Jesus, and I know that you eighth graders, um, this is your last official day as students of Sacred Heart Catholic School. And I know it's a day in the past few months that has been unlike any other in the history of Sacred Heart Catholic School. And um, so you will always be famous in that regard, and we hope that you'll be the only ones famous 
for having to do the last couple months of your school and your last year uh, in a distance learning situation. But you will be forever in our remembrance, and we look forward to seeing you and to having uh, your graduation uh, ceremonies. And we promise that we're going to do our best uh, to keep everybody safe. If you saw the, the, um, the, when I turned the, the camera around so you could see your teachers, you see that they're all very uh, appropriately spaced out, socially distant. They're wearing their masks. And I'd be wearing one, except that I'm talking right now. So you'll see my wet mask come on a little bit later. Um, but uh, we have measured out the church such that uh, everybody who will see, uh, sit down uh, in their households will be able to be six feet from one, one another and they will be able to be safe and we'll come together, we'll pray, we'll turn around at each other, we'll smile behind our masks and you will be able to celebrate together and graduate together. Uh, and so that is our, our great hope and know that we have a very strict protocol in place when it comes to uh, disinfecting and cleaning after the mass today. Uh, we'll have uh, people come by and disinfect uh, the pews. In fact, we'll have a fogging mist that will envelop the entire place to disinfect the church. Um, so it'll be ready uh, for Mass this coming weekend, as well as for graduation services that will take place on Tuesday, June uh, the 2nd. So I spoke a little bit about uh, what it means to be peacemakers, following those uh, who pa follow the path of nonviolence, like Martin Luther King Jr., and then working for justice, true justice, a justice which is rooted in following the commands of the Lord. That is the kind of justice that we are meant to follow, and hopefully uh, those of you who have gone through Sacred Heart Catholic School, whether through kindergarten, through eighth grade, or uh, for a shorter period of time, that you will have come to know Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and allow his teachings to form how you live your lives and how you strive uh, to live and work for true and authentic justice in this world. Uh, so the Mass prayers today are focused on peace and justice. You'll probably notice that. And so we want to pray for that. And we want to pray for the angels of peace to calm, calm the spirit of rage that has descended upon so many so that they might indeed uh, come to a renewed sense of peace and then hopefully we can start to rebuild those places um, that have been uh, torn down or lost so that uh, we might begin again anew as brothers and sisters in Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the world, let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves and for our own needs, but for the entire people. For the whole Christian people, let us beseech the abundance of divine goodness and strive to live according to the teachings of Christ in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who exercise authority in our nation, from our president to our governor, uh, to our mayors, uh, to those who exercise um, the power of the state and, and the police powers of the state, that they would strive to exercise all of those powers with justice and the common good and the establishment of peace as their first and foremost priority, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our graduates from Sacred Heart Catholic School, our eighth graders, um, that as they take this next step into their uh, future, they will look favorably and kindly upon these many years they have been with us and use these years as a true foundation um, for being disciples of Jesus and making his peace known in this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who cannot be present with us at this Mass, let us beseech the Lord who observes all things and pray blessings upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who pray in faith, and ask the mercy of the Lord upon us and our cities. Let us entreat the compassionate love of our Savior. We pray to the Lord. For ourselves and those close to us who await the Lord's goodness, let us call upon the mercy of Christ the Lord. We pray to the Lord. And for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, 
that they might enjoy the goodness of heavenly life in the bosom of the Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the holy souls in purgatory for which this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call upon you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. May the saving sacrifice of your Son, the King of Peace, offered under sacramental signs that signify peace and unity, strengthen, we pray, O Lord, concord among all your children through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together, the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the coming power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, and take away the sins of the world, Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection of mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Let us pray. Bestow on us, we pray, O Lord, the spirit of charity, so that sustained by the body and blood of your only begotten Son, we may be effective in nurturing among all the peace that he has left us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Well, before we turn off the uh, live stream on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page, uh, Facebook channel, I'd like to invite our principal and our teachers each to come forward uh, one by one to just offer a few words of encouragement. So um, we'll we'll start with our principal. Good morning, everyone. I hope Mass today brought you some comfort And we are all here praying for you as we end our school year today. And all the teachers are here also. So we hold all of you in our hearts and blessings to pre-K all the way through eighth graders. And eighth graders, you have been our rock stars through our distance learning. And we will send you off with a glorious celebration on Tuesday at graduation. So remember to be kind and respectful to everyone. Good morning, guys, middle schoolers especially. I miss seeing you in church today and being with you. As we prayed for you today, I wish you a good summer and that you have a wonderful time with your family at home and that we all together work to make peace in our world and I hope you're too. Don't forget to read. Good morning, Sacred Heart families and students. We sure miss PDA in church today, but we said a lot of prayers and blessings for a safe summer, and always be kind to each other. Good morning. Um, you can continue your science learning by watching the space takeoff tomorrow, so keep that in mind around noon. You guys are rock stars. Keep up the hard work, and we'll see you next fall. We did it fourth grade. I will see you in 15 minutes. (laughs) Hi, everybody. This is Miss Eckergren, your cone head. And thank you for participating in track and field day. And I expect everybody to stay in good shape and eat your vegetables and fruit all summer long. Okay, take it easy. Hi, third graders. I miss seeing you at church today and being with you at church today. I hope you have a great summer and we'll see you at 1230 for our last lunch. Um, Eighth graders, congratulations on graduation. Hello, everybody. It's your favorite music teacher. (laughs) I just wanted to say goodbye to everybody for the summer and can't wait to see all of you. We wish that you would have been here today, but you're here in spirit. Keep music in your hearts. And eighth graders, we will see you on Tuesday. Congratulations.
thank you for praying with us today. We are happy um, to pray for you and we'll continue to pray for you. And remember to take some time to start with music this summer. Hi, everybody. We missed you today, especially my second graders. I just want to let everyone at Sacred Heart know that I'm going to miss you guys so much next year. Um, but I promise to come back and visit. And I just keep all of you guys in my heart. And I'm so thankful for having been part of this amazing school. So I'll just miss everybody. Have a good summer. Well, I think everyone had a chance to, I think, to say uh, something, words of encouragement, to say goodbye. Uh, so I'm just going to offer one word of advice to all the uh, teachers who are here. Make sure you wash your hands. Do it well. Say in our Father as you do it. And for those of you at home, uh, this too shall pass, and we will be back with one another. We're planning to be open next fall in the flesh, in school. So prepare for that day, and it will come. All right, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful Friday, and uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, sometime uh, over the summer at church on Sunday uh, or in other places that we might congregate. All right, God bless you, and thank you for being with us this morning. Amen.